Welcome to the second lecture of our free beginners course. In the previous lecture, we talked about market manipulations and how they create repeated market flow patterns. We also introduced the market maker as the predator in the forex market after the retail traders account. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about the market maker indicators and have an introduction to levels counting. So the method can be traded with little or no indicators on the charts. If you become proficient, you'd see that indicators may be of no use. However, to make things easier, a number of features and indicators can be added at your discretion. These includes candlestick patterns, exponential moving averages with period 5, 13, 50, 200, and 800, and the last one being the traders dynamic index so we are going to start on the candlesticks patterns the first and perhaps most important thing to understand about candlesticks and price action is that in the wrong market context or market conditions they have little or no meaning i'm sure if you go online you may look for candlestick reversal patterns and you will see a ton of them however within a wrong market context they will be of no use for example a hammer in the middle of a trend is relatively meaningless and then a hammer at the high or low of day has a great deal of significance it is also important to understand that candlestick patterns can only be defined at the close of the candle i am sure you've seen that if you enter whilst a candle is still running usually it will actually end up in something else so the expression backside of the hour refers to the behavior of candles to provide their true identity in the last part of the candlesticks period so this is a feature controlled by the market makers and is particularly noticeable in the hourly and four hourly charts so if you see a green candle probably an h1 green candle moving very fast i'm sure you've noticed that in the last five minutes of that candlestick it may draw back and become probably a dodge so in areas where it is their intention to convince traders that um, there will be continuation right they want to convince traders that there will be continuation it makes sense to leave a candlest the candlestick as solid green and red candle until the last moments when it pulled back, revealing itself as a spike or some other relevant shape. So this we are just saying, they want to convince traders to go up, right? What they will usually do is push the market, give a very big candlestick, a solid green candlestick like that. Then in the last part of that hour you'd see that candlestick probably ending like this that is why we we need this um we need uh this fact to be respected that candlestick patterns can only be defined at the close of a candle so market maker candlesticks what are they are they i'm sure you've seen or learned a lot of them online so we'll discuss the major market maker candlesticks uh, in the following slides so the first one is spike candles so these are oversized candles in an m15 time frame chart these candles are designed to get you excited trade emotionally and encourage you to enter the market right However, price is pulled back before the candle is closed and those traders who entered on the excitement then find themselves tra trapped. So you'd see that a candlestick will actually be a solid green in this case and then end probably this point. And the market makers will actually shift away from those who would have ended probably at this point or at this point and these traders are already trapped so if this occurs at the high of day it is a great deal like what we've said earlier 
So these candles are most often seen in the first leg of a reversal setup, right? We have two legs, but on the first leg, usually we have something like this that will convince traders whilst their intention is to go away like that. But it is important to remember that price will almost always pull off very quick, quickly to create these spike candles. So the other place that these candles are often seen is at level three of the three day cycle, right? We have what we call a three day cycle. We'll talk, talk about it later in this lecture. Then we have another uh, type of candlestick, which is called railroad tracks, RRT. So the railroad track uh, is to trick people into going in the direction of the first candlestick. So a railroad track is whereby we have two candlestick of the same length like that. They mimic the railroad or the, rail, the railway line. This being a green candle and this one being a red candle. But it is snatched away quickly in the next. But it is snatched away quickly on the next. They are really an anomaly of an M or W pattern. So what they do with this railroad track is actually to shift up and then later shift down away very quickly. So the, the same compression trick can be observed when the M or W pattern in the M15 time frame is viewed on the hourly or four hourly time frame. What we mean is on the M15 time frame, we may see an M, but on the H1, it will be a railroad track or on the H4 time frame. So it's also a candlestick reversal pattern that these guys use. Then we have another one that we call high test pattern. So the high test pattern occurs at the price of yesterday's high. Each and every day sets its high and its low. So for example, the general technical trend may be demonstrating an uptrend, but as price reaches yesterday's high, a reversal pattern may be seen. Any of the candlestick patterns are possible in this region and all mean the same thing. You should change direction and trade against the technical trend if you see this. So if the pattern is a double tap test, but then it fails when it closes above the high of the first, you do not have to wait for your stop loss to be triggered. Rather, you can shut it down and wait for another opportunity. Then we are now in the market maker indicators, the exponential moving averages that we mentioned on the start of this course. So in our methodology, we use five EMAs, which are five, 13, 50, 200, and 800. And these can be added on the MT4 or trading view. I'm sure there are a lot of traders who love uh, to take their trades on the trading view, trading platform. So here's how to access the EMAs on TradingView. You may just type in the DeLorean EMAs like this on the indicators and pick this one. It will actually give you all the indicators that we need for the market maker method. So moving average when used in an appropriate way, that is the context of the market maker methodology, one can have a true reading of the market direction, a reading of market momentum, entry and exit signals, moving support and resistance points, targets for a trade for a tech profit. EMAs can give you a possible point where the market will reverse and we actually combine that into an EMA simplification theory. So what are the uses of these EMAs? The crossovers of the EMAs can offer entry triggers or confirmation for of entry triggers when viewed in the right context. Why are we keeping on saying the right context? EMAs are where they are uh, over and over again, but you need to know the market context, the market maker context actually, to be 
on the right side of the trades. So the 5 and 13 EMAs are the signal lines. The 50 EMA is the balance line and shows the intraday trend. The 200 EMA is the warm base defining the longer term trend, right? Then price always returns to the home base. It's actually a proverb that you should pick up from there. These EMAs are the best of the EMA simplification theory we talk of in the advanced course. Here's the introduction to levels counting. So understanding the count of the three day pattern and the weekly pattern is everything. One who can understand how to count levels has a higher probability or a higher chance of getting most of his or her trades correct. If you understand these three things, right, which are the candlestick patterns, the EMAs, and the levels, then you can expect to be better than 90 or 95% accurate. But this is an accuracy measured from a large number of trades. Someone who actually take two trades and expect to have a 90% accuracy rate, that is impossible. So a large number of trades actually is measured from 50 to 100 trades. So market makers don't have infinite amounts of capital and have to make retracements to book a profit before they continue. This is why they have to make pullbacks that seem to occur after every impulsive rise or drop. So these impulsive rises or drops are the ones that we call levels. So levels are combined to, co to give us what we call a market maker cycle. So a market maker cycle consists of level one, level two, and level three. So if we can look closely, we can see that they were in play at this point, whereby they had opened a sell, closure of their positions, pullback, and entry of more positions up to this zone, closure of their positions, a pullback, and then the last. At level three, of any trading time frame, we usually get a reversal. And that reversal will lead to what we call a reset point that occurs at points that we talk more about in the advanced course. So levels are not as easy as this uh, template. We need to actually define how levels interlink with each other in different time frames, where resets occurs, as well as points of market reversals. So that can only be understood if you watch our video in the advanced course. So we have come, we've come to the end of our, our last, our second, uh, we have come to the end of our second lecture of the beginners course. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about resets anatomy and introduction to other blogs. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.